How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today I'm taking a quick break from some of the more serious stories happening all over the nation to bring you a crazy story about this white lady from Kansas pretending to be a black woman for the entirety of her professional career. As a matter of fact, she's built her career on pretending to be black. And I'll place her picture on the screen before you. Now, elephant in the room, million dollar question. Are you fooled by this? Are, are you fooled by the, the black um, get up, the hair and all this and that? I see a whole white woman dressed in ethnic gear. I see a Halloween costume. This is the equivalent of Sean King. I had no idea that anybody thought Sean King was black. I thought people thought he was just a white guy that was an SJW out there just trying to fight for quote unquote black causes, for black leftist causes. I didn't think anybody thought he was black, but people still think that this guy's black. He's not black. Just like Richard Dolezal is not black. And this lady, Jessica Krug, from Kansas is not black. Now, let's get back to Miss Krug's career. Um, of course, she is a professor, well, an associate professor of history and Africana, are you surprised, at George Washington University out there in D.C., where they removed George Washington recently, but that's a different story, and I digress. She's also an author, of course. Her book is called Fugitive Modernities, Kasama and the Politics of Freedom, probably some pro-black, blackity black, back, black to Africa type thing. It's crazy how you got this white lady writing a book encouraging you as a black person to go back to Africa. Hilarious. There's a lot more books out there like that written by white liberals that you think black folks wrote, but I won't go down that road right now and keep on moving. Um, she's also a dancer with the KR3TS dance company, a cop watcher, whatever that means. I guess that's when somebody's getting locked up and the handcuffs on too tight and she comes out of her house like a Karen, basically a cop Karen, a black cop Karen. And she's written for Essence and wait for it, Race Bader, I'm not lying. This lady is a piece of work for sure. She wrote an entire confession letter that we've got to read. I've not read it yet, but I've heard it's good. We got to get into it to see exactly what's going on with this lady, why she was pretending to be black, or at least fooling some people into believing that this obviously white lady was black. Let's get into it, shall we? And you see the headline right there on the screen before you, The Truth and the Anti-Black Violence of My Lies by Jessica A. Krug. And I'll place this link in the description box below so you can see it and read it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. You can read it right there on medium.com where this thing got published, but we'll continue. For the better part of my adult life, every move I've made, every relationship I've formed has been rooted in the napalm toxic soil of lies. Not just any lies. Let's pause right there. I'm getting some middle school, high school, fiction, book, book report type vibes. You know, was she an author for a living while she was being black? Like, was she selling books to the African bookstore or going to black festivals with a booth set up trying to sell, you know, random woke works of fiction? We'll see if that's the case. We'll get to it. But we'll continue to an escalating degree over my adult life. I have eschewed my lived experience as a white Jewish child in suburban Kansas City under various assumed identities within a blackness, that's blackness with a capital B, that I had no right to claim. First, North African blackness, then US rooted blackness, then Caribbean rooted Bronx blackness. <laughs> okay, I'm not really sure how you get to define what these types of quote unquote blacknesses are, Miss White Lady, but we'll continue. I have not only claimed these identities as my own when I had absolutely no right to do so, when doing so is a very epitome of violence, of thievery and appropriation of the myriad ways in which non-black people continue to use and abuse black identities and cultures. But I have formed intimate relationships with loving, compassionate people who have trusted and cared for me when I have deserved neither trust nor caring. Let's pause for a second. Um, this kind of confirms what I've been saying for a long time. As always, those super white liberal, bleeding heart liberals that virtue signal for black folks and for black causes that are the most destructive. Like this is what they, they talk about, you know, uh, what they say, cultural appropriation, but it's them that's doing it. They assume others are doing it that are not doing it. It's really them. They'll say, 
um, somebody eating chicken is cultural appropriation. It's like, really? Excuse me? Like, I thought chicken was just a bird. Does it have a race? Can only black folks eat chicken? And then if you say that only black folks can eat chicken, are you racist? What's going on? All right. This is like, this is the, the final boss of wokeness. This lady is telling me everything so far that I have experienced firsthand with people like her, not with anybody else. It's only her ilk that do this, but we continue. People have fought together with me and have fought for me. And my continued appropriation of a black Caribbean identity is not only in the starkest terms, wrong, unethical, immoral, anti-black, colonial, but it means that every step I've taken has gaslighted those whom I love. A lot of SJW buzzwords, a lot of woke buzzwords, gaslighted, anti-black with a capital B, a lot, a lot of woke buzzwords. Like I said, this lady is the epitome of what I am upset about all the time as it relates to the white liberal and virtue signaling. But we'll continue. Intention never matters more than impact. To say that I clearly have been battling some unaddressed mental health demons for my entire life. Oh, you don't say. I am so shocked. Wow. We'll, we'll move on. As both an adult and child is obvious. Oh, yes, clearly. Mental health issues likely explain why I assumed a false identity initially as a youth and why I continued down and developed it for so long. The mental health professionals for whom I have been so belatedly seeking help assured me that this is a common response to some of the severe trauma that marked my early childhood and teen years. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's let's see what happened. Hopefully it's nothing too crazy, but let's see what's going on if she even goes down that road. But mental health issues can never will never neither explain nor justify neither condone nor excuse that in spite of knowing and regularly critiquing any and every non-black person who appropriates from black people my false identity was crafted entirely from the fabric of black lives oh man that was a big time word salad but can i get a crouton or a, a drop of some ranch dressing please or some caesar dressing because that was straight dry i'm not going to be able to eat it but we'll move on that i claim belonging with living people and ancestors to whom and for whom my being is always a threat at best and a death sentence at worst. I am not a cultural vulture. I am a culture leech. <laughs> and if you guys don't know the, the term culture vulture, that means a person that's not black that comes in to quote unquote black spaces like rap or something like that. And then they want to kind of assert themselves and do different things and become basically successful in it. Read DJ Flag from YouTube. Look him up if you don't know what I'm talking about. All right. I have thought about ending these lives many times over many years, but my cowardice was always more powerful than my ethics. I don't know right from wrong. I know history. I know power. I am a coward. <laughs> There is no ignorance, no innocence, nothing to claim, nothing to defend. I have moved wrong in every way for years. I believe in restorative justice or possible even when and where I don't know what that means or how it could work. I believe in accountability and I believe in cancel culture as necessary and righteous too for those with less structural power to it against those with more power. So right there, see, look. She's talking about how she's mentally ill, right? But I feel like she's been brainwashed by this SJW woke type of culture and mob, okay? She's believing in cancel culture because she's been trained to believe in it, not because she wants to be canceled because she thinks it's an appropriate punishment. Just like she believes that if you're a black person, you have less power than a white person. She is a white supremacist. She feels like she is white, therefore superior to black people. You see what I'm saying? She was trying to reduce her power by becoming black, in my humble opinion. All right. So when they talk about those on the right being white supremacists and you Nazi and whatnot, it's like, all right, where are the actual white supremacists at? Are they on the right or are they on the left? But I digress. Let's keep on going. I should absolutely be canceled. No, I don't write in passive voice ever because I believe we must name power. So you should absolutely cancel me and I absolutely should cancel myself. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> of course not. So I'm not getting down. We're not getting to the core of what's even going on here. Like I said, I was like, all right, are we going to get into what happened? All I'm seeing right now is just a white liberal beating themselves in public virtually. 
You see what I'm saying? Like, I've seen some things where they kind of, like, put hooks on their back and mark their own back up and right on their face, do humiliating things. This right here, this is the same thing as that, just on the virtual platform. I'm not really seeing you own up to what you did and why you did it. But hopefully we get to that towards the end. I'm going to go and wrap it up right here. I kind of get the gist of what she's saying. She's not really talking about what the trauma was. That could just be a lie. All right. I have not lived a double life. There is no parallel form of my adulthood connected to white people or white community or an alternative white identity. I live this life fully, completely with no exit plan or strategy. I have built only this life, a life within which I have operated with a radical sense of ethics of right and wrong and with rage rooted in black power. An ideology which every person should support, but to which I have no possible claim as my own. Okay. Now, that's, that's pretty much the end right there. Like I said, if you want to read it, I'll put that in the box. All right, so you got that. Now, I was waiting on the part where she said, okay, you know, my stepdaddy beat me, my mama beat me, she left me for somebody else. I was waiting on that, but I didn't find it. You know, I was kind of skipping ahead a little bit, but I didn't see it even in the skimming. I think what she did here was just, you know, fall in love with the culture, wanting to be black, and then maybe there's some actual financial benefits. Maybe that white privilege card is not so privileged after all, huh? Maybe not. Maybe you can go to college for free if you're black. Maybe you can get into a college easier if you're black. Maybe you're able to get certain positions and certain little set-asides for you if you're black. Maybe that's the case. Okay, we've seen it before. Sean King, who has not come out the closet yet, it's like, sir... Your Clark Kent disguise is not fooling me. I know a white man when I see it. Don't try to have no low haircut with some kind of deep voice pretending to be black, all right? It's not fooling me. I knew from the very beginning that you weren't black. As a matter of fact, when people said to me that he was black, I was su surprised. I'm like, really? You think this white man is black? How? Richard Dole is all the same thing. An obvious white person. I don't really care what color you are, and you can be some type of SJW, woke, black is beautiful, black power artist, and that, and the third without having to be black. Okay, you can stand up for everybody without having to be everybody. You can be yourself and just be who you are, regardless of what's going on. So <laughs> as I close, I want to say this. It's, it's kind of hard for me to believe that being black is so much of a bad thing. It's a curse, all this and that. And the third is discrimination, all this. When you got black immigrants that come here and do well, when you got white people pretending to be black and doing well, I mean, what's the excuse? Tighten up, do right. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Are you surprised that yet another black fish is probably the best word to use? Black fish to come out? If that's your viewpoint, let me know why in the comments below. Or are you not surprised? Is it pretty much par for the course for the far left? Okay. When the majority of quote unquote Black Lives Matter are white people out there tearing stuff up, screaming Black Lives Matter with BLM shirts and whatnot. How was it a far cry to just have a white person pretend to be black? What's the difference? I don't really see it. You got black folks that are from these areas that these white folks are in talking about Black Lives Matter saying, hey, don't tear my neighborhood up. Stop doing this. This is not what I want. And then they're telling you, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it's, it's racial injustice. We got to support it. They feel like they're more black than black people. And like I said, they're white supremacists. They feel like they're superior to the black person. Therefore, they got to go out there and prove it. I don't think I'm superior or inferior to anybody. I'm a man that says you are a man or a woman. That's it. I, I judge you based on that. It was a guy that said something like that back in the day. I forget his name. Uh, I think his name was King something or other. You know, content of the character, not the color of the skin. I mean... Maybe I'm just remembering that wrong, but I do remember that being told to me when I was a kid. Maybe we're not doing that anymore. Maybe now it's all about politics and your identity. Nothing else really matters. Whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.